everybody welcome to general hospital mv my gh after show it is 2022 which means it's an all new year for the citizens of port charles but first we got to talk about how the previous year ended let's get into it marshall was flying high after his christmas gig in the hospital so much so that he and the other musicians were talking about starting a band and he approaches epiphany to be the band's new singer poor epiphany she seemed to half expect him to be asking her out on a date and it's not that he's not interested it's just that he doesn't know how to do it which is fair considering he's been dead for the last 40 years do you guys ship epiphany and marshall let me know in the comments below curtis is still determined to find out anything about marshall's past and he and drew cook up an idea to have drew hire him for a job except all marshall seems to know is music so it looks like drew's gonna have to get a little bit creative which is not hard considering the amount of musicians that are in the quartermain family it'll be interesting to see what they come up with curtis also goes to stella for more information about his father he's clearly wanting to build some kind of relationship with his father but again it's a hard thing to get past pretending to be dead for 40 years that ain't no small thing and also Marshall is avoiding answering questions about his past so it's very frustrating to Curtis and to the audience Meanwhile, Sean is settling in at his out of the blue job as publisher of The Invader and he's giving TJ a tour of the place and TJ mentions that Marshall is alive and wouldn't you know it, Marshall just happens to show up being lost in the Metro Court looking for the arts and culture section of the hotel. Or I guess The Invader. Marshall was definitely not happy to see Sean. He is aware that Sean is the one that shot Tommy and it makes sense that he's very mad because all the other Ashfords have had time to process the situation, whereas Marshall's been away for 40 years, so he hasn't really had time to cope with the situation, and he really blames himself for not being there for Tommy when Tommy was going through his hard time. Do you guys think that Marshall is a good guy or a bad guy? Because it seems like the writers aren't even quite sure what to do with him yet. I mean, on the one hand, they are showing that he has good tendencies. He clearly wants to build a relationship with his family again and feel sad about leaving them for 40 years. But on the other hand, we're definitely seeing him be a little bit shady. He's getting these mysterious phone calls where he's saying that he is following the protocol and making progress. So it's hard to say just what Marshall is up to as of yet. You know who should be having a similar story play out right now? Elizabeth Weber, but much like any other time that this show mentions Jeff, it gets dropped and then we get these riveting scenes of Elizabeth trying to decide on whether to date Finn or mourn her husband just a little bit longer. Thrilling scenes, really. Elizabeth almost dropped Franco's wedding ring into the sink and handyman Finn goes in for the rescue and when she gets it back, she decides to put it away in the kitchen drawer. Now I know that we don't get to see a whole lot of Elizabeth's house, but I'm assuming that somewhere in there, maybe perhaps in Elizabeth's room, there is a jewelry box where it would be better suited to put Franco's ring. A kitchen cupboard? Really? Ay ay ay. All right, let's talk about Alexis. She is still trying to find her calling outside of the former prison walls that she was in, and she decides to go to a seminar at PCU that is about criminal law, and Jocelyn happens to be there because she wants to listen to it as well, and Spencer is there because he kind of got suckered into it. Basically, through the whole seminar, Alexis was kind of correcting the speaker, and you would think that the speaker would have been mad about it, but instead, she's like, you know what? You know a lot. I recognize you, Alexis. Why are you here? You should be teaching. And she says that there's a job opening at PCU. All she needs to do is pass the background check. And Alexis definitely flinches when she says that. Now listen, if Alexis doesn't get this job after they had serial killer Franco being an art therapist for children at a hospital, then this show is ridiculous, okay? Alexis did way less than Franco has done in his history, so that would be nuts if Alexis doesn't get this job. All right, I put it off for as long as I possibly could have. Let's talk about the mess that was Nina's hearing. I think we can summarize what led to the truth coming out pretty quickly here. Willow was on the stand, Scotty questioned her, and she was forced to tell the truth under oath, and all hell broke loose. Especially when Sonny got on the stand after and said that he was not Nina's victim. After that, Nina was cleared from all the charges against her. Carly blew up at Sonny and kicked him out of the house, and then ripped Willow a new one for not telling the truth sooner. 
And I can't believe this show has me siding with Nina because if Carly is not the biggest hypocrite as if we didn't watch her fall in love with Jason and hide that from Sunny for a while and is still really hasn't dealt with her feelings for Jason, not that she could because Jason is now dead, but you know what I mean, it's just hypocritical of her. Then of course you still have Michael acting like a complete dumbass hell bent on revenge against Nina still and he goes as far as punching Scott in the face and I, I think Scott's not gonna press charges but if I were him I totally would have put his punk ass back in jail. God the Corinthos family is just so unlikable to me. I hate them. Now since Sonny can't go home he decides to go to Charlie's and he gets drunk. Dante is there with him comforting him and they're discussing Sonny's feelings for Nina and Dante is smart enough to take his keys away and leaves before he heads over to Sam's house. And then, wouldn't you know it, Nina shows up there just in time to offer him a ride. Y'all, I swear, if 2022 starts off with a Sunny and Nina hookup, that is just a bad omen. As if we didn't have already enough bad omens with Betty White dying on the last day of the year, like... <laughs> This is horrible. It's probably gonna happen. Although there is a part of me that's like, Carly kinda deserves this for being hypocritical. Like I said, I can't believe that this show has me actually siding with Nina. I had to give Nina props because she looks at Willow at one point, like back at the hearing, and she's like, you could have lied and just rolled in the dirt with the rest of us, Willow. That's right, Nina, call Willow out on her martyrship. Girl needs to get off her high horse. Now as for Carly, she had to beat Emo and go over to Jason's bridge, and coincidentally, Drew shows up, and she's looking at Drew like a dog looks at human food from underneath the table between your legs. I am not here for a Carly and Drew hookup, y'all. You know, come to think of it, this isn't even like the first time this has happened. Like Carly, the last time she was mourning Jason on this bridge, Franco appeared on that bridge and then they started hooking up and back then everyone thought that Franco was Jason's twin. Now she's just doing the same thing with Drew. I mean that's my prediction anyway. I hope I'm wrong but it seems to be like it could go that way. Alright let's talk about some of the happier moments from the New Year's Eve episode. We got to see Sam and Drew hanging out with Scout. It was a really cute moment between Drew and Scout. And of course, we got to see my faves, Martin and Lucy. I can't believe that they didn't do this sooner. They're so fun to watch. Last week, Valentin gave Martin an ultimatum saying that he needs to either choose to sleep with Lucy or to work with him because he can't do both because it's a conflict of interest. But Martin wants to have his cake and eat it too. Lucy doesn't seem to be happy about that. She wants him to choose her, but she's having a lot of fun. So she goes with it for a while. They were at the Savoy and Martin was hoping that Valentine wouldn't show up, but of course Valentine did show up with Anna, so Maxie had to sneak them out of there at the strike of midnight. It was fun to watch. And like I said, Valentine was there with Anna, and they shared a kiss on the New Year's as well. I'm not really a fan of them, but I know that they have a lot of fans that were probably thrilled to see it. And we had Curtis and Portia making love at the strike of midnight as well. I mean, I think this was the first time that they've made love, which is actually surprising because it feels like they've been together for a long time now. Jocelyn I met up with Cameron right at the strike of midnight to kiss under the fireworks as well. Oh, and back at the Savoy, Scott and Liesl had a bit of a lover spat over how he treated Nina. He said something cruel to Nina after she wasn't so happy with how he won the case for her and Liesl did not appreciate it. But I'm sure that they'll get over it because it's Liesl and Scott. But yeah, that wraps up 2021 in Port Charles, and that wraps up the first GH Envy of 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Before you guys leave, I want you to go into the comments of this video and let me know what your least favorite moment of 2021 was on GH, and then let me know your favorite moment on GH in 2021, and then let me know what you hope for in 2022 for GH. I will tell you all of mine. My least favorite moment in 2021, bar none, was the fact that Peter came back alive after falling down the stairs, bleeding out, being declared dead by a nurse and a doctor, and then being put in a freezer in the sub-basement of the hospital after that, and he's still alive. That, that just, this is a nightmare. It's a nightmare that we still haven't woken up from yet. The best moment for me in 2021 was the Sean Donnelly tribute episode, having John Riley's real life daughter play Annie Donnelly and hearing Tiffany's voice and seeing Robin and Felicia come back. And speaking of Felicia, she is coming back tomorrow. I'm so excited that she's officially back on contract at the show again. As for what I want in 2022, I just want two things. Very simple, I just want Peter dead because we have been waiting for years and it's time. 
and we need Jeff Weber to make an appearance. If they're going to mention him again in 2022, he's going to have to show up at the door right after because I cannot sit through this pattern anymore. But yeah, that wraps things up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned this Wednesday. We are live streaming with no game plan. <laughs> I don't really know what to do. I think I just want to chill with you guys and just maybe talk about predictions for 2022 with the show or what we want to see happen. We can just go into details instead of these, you know, brief comments about it. It'll be lots of fun. So join me on the Dion's Corner channel for that. And if you liked this video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.